All set. Let's go. We live, baby. Nice. Yeah. All right. What happened on my screen share, though? Boy. Are we still seeing my screen, though? Yes, sir. I am, at least. Yep, yep. I got you. Loud, yeah, loud and clear, and the screen is there. I just wish he I looks, could find, find my screen. Nice. Oh, my God. Nice Where's my screen at? This is how we start the recording off with all the phrases. <laughs> I'm gonna edit all this. Dang, where's my screen at? <laughs> it was the barbecue chicken until now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ah, here we go. Here we go. Game time. Can y'all see my chart? Yep. All right. So. What's up, y'all? This your boy, Jay Wayne. You know. All right. So, um, we recording. All right. So, like I was saying, though, um, this thing was consolidating for just, like, weeks and weeks and weeks, as we can see here, and it dropped off, finally. Okay? It, it broke through this level that I got right here and retested, dropped off some more. All right? So, we missed all that. If you, you know, if you missed it, you missed it. And, like I said, I called this by this week here. First of all, I saw this big pin bar coming up from this demand zone. I'm like, you got to take it. Like, I got to take this. So I caught it out last at the end of last week, maybe like Friday, and um, just caught, caught a piece of that. I ain't going to say I caught it all, but I caught a nice little piece of it. Okay, and the reason why I caught that buy is because look at over here. This big old candle exploded right through, like huge. Like, so, okay. I'm going to mark that up because that's my demand zone. Let it come all the way back around, and boom, we came again. Let's buy again. All right, let's drop down to the – um. so that's why that uh, we see that happening here. But I'm going to drop down to the four-hour. <clears throat> uh, let's see. We want to make that a little bit bigger. All right, we dropped down to the four hour. <clears throat> and uh, I had this marked up before the market opened up. And uh, as you can see, it's still kind of climbing up. So that's why I got this here. So I'm not really looking to take this buy right now. But, um, if you guys understand the basics is that we are in now in a downtrend. Um, so I'm definitely not gonna uh, take this buy right now. Uh, I'll let I just pass that buy up and look for a bigger continuation move to the for the sale, um, unless it changes momentum, changes direction. So uh, I'm looking for right now. You can um, the, first of all, let me say that um, the way that you can use this by not just listening to me, watching me, or whatever you can get from me, like training you, you you guys actually can use this template by going into the trade setups and discord also i want you to mark your charts up just the way i have it if my style works for you and so uh you can you can see the numbers right over here 1.22 1. 1. you know and you can mark your chart up and wait for it in the beginning this is what i did when i watched it, some of my mentors i would mark my chart up and just let price happen and fall into the moves and when i see it when i see it happening i just take the trade you know, and take, you know, take the right lot size and whatever and uh, set my stop loss and, and, you know, let it run, let it play out. So that's how you guys can do it as well. But I'm expecting this boy to hit up here. The reason why is because I'm saying, okay, we'll let this floor right here become the ceiling. We, we will see. None of this stuff is guaranteed. You see why I got a couple different setups here, possible setups. So price, I'm basically just trying to trap it the best way I can and help myself identify if this, if these moves don't happen until Tuesday, I'm, st I'm still going to leave these, uh, these lines up here because if I don't have these lines up here, I may forget what to look for. Things is getting real busy. I might like half step a move and get into a trade too early. But by leaving these lines up here throughout the week, I can, it can kind of help me get back into that mind frame, the, uh, the mindset that I had today, you know, Wednesday. So Hopefully that makes sense. So I'll leave the lines up there. Um, plus, also, I could uh, see how it played out and show you guys a recap next week 
or Wednesday or whatever, how it, how it played out according to how I drew it up. Um, so that's how we uh, – that's what I'm waiting for here, waiting for a bounce up here at this zone. Uh, bounce off. We, we'll see if it, if it, if it uh, bounce through. I'll wait for a retest. Is that Greg that's uh, not muted up? Yeah. So, so that's what we're waiting for on EURUSD. We're waiting for these moves here. Um, definitely, if it bounced through here, ah oh, man, we looking for a reverse. Basically, you know, if it come all the way up that high. Look at this though. Let me pull out this Fibonacci, guys. Um, All right, so, <clears throat> so the the one what I'm looking for is like the levels I'm looking for is the 78.6 to 61.8. You can see these levels been hit. Um, so where is this one gonna go? You know, is this one gonna hit at the 70 78.6? You know what I'm saying? And then bounce down. Is it gonna go all the way up to the 61.8? So with with my with my zones that I've drawn plus this Fibonacci, I'm gonna catch it. Somewhere it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit and bounce off somewhere, and I'm going to catch it. So I'm just being ready. And I just – I know the Fibonacci is a little too – more – some uh, like a little uh, too advanced for some of you guys, but just want to show you, you got to be introduced at some point, right? So I'm going to catch it some way. One of these levels is going to hit and bounce. And I'm just going to look for another engulfing. And use my indicators, my 30-minute uh, my, uh, crossovers, my uh, RSI, the stochastic, you know what I'm saying, the – the the MACD, I'm gonna use my indicators to tell me when this boy's reversing back to the downside if it's going to do it. So I'm gonna catch it between these Fibonacci and my uh my markups for my zones. Man, why the fuck you going? Yeah, mark uh mute up please. So um so that's it for uh EURUSD. Go check the uh Discord for that trade. GBP USD. Same deal. We go on the daily. Okay, <clears throat> kind of look the same like uh, EURUSD, to be honest with you. Um, it kind of do work the same a little bit, but it'd be like off. Maybe EURUSD might be the move that it's going to do on GBP. USD might be off a little bit as far as the timing, um, but they'd be looking similar lately to me. I'm still trying to master that whole what pairs equal each other and, and how they react to each other. I'm still trying to master that, but I've been noticing these two kind of uh, look the same a lot. Um, so we see a consolidation. We see that reversal. So really I jumped to the daily to get the full story. Like, am I, am I overall looking at a downtrend? Am I overall looking at, you know, a consolidation within these big zones? Am I looking at a, a, a buyer's market? You know, I, so I, I look at it on a daily for that reason. So you drop down to the four hour and see, and now I'm ready to make some trades. So what trades can I get in this week? What what, what levels am I looking at? So I dropped to the four hour and um, this boy ain't all the way hit down here, but it can hit either here or here, either one, right? So I got it marked down at the bottom, but it could, it could turn around right here. So I'm ready for that. And these are the levels. And this this screenshot is already ready for you guys in Discord as well. So you can screenshot it here. You can go there and download it and mark this up on your phone. But I'm, re, I'm expecting this boy to hit up here. If it get up this high, also look at this. I got my pivots set, put my pivots out there. You see that, that, uh, that uh, what they call um, resistance right here. Resistance one, it could pivot here. You see that pivot right there. So it could pivot there and shoot back down. Uh, let's pull out the Fibonacci on this one. Let me first start right here. 61.8, that's where you see this. So if you go all the way down here, price was respecting that right here at that 61.8, shot back down. You know, where are we going to hit now? You know, so let me scroll back down get up in this level you know maybe it can it could 
It's already wicked out at the 78.6. I feel like it's just going to kind of consolidate it here, maybe hit to this pivot point. Could go up to the 61.8, but like I say, I'm going to be ready either way. So when I call out this trade, definitely I'm going to be picking it off of these levels here. Uh, let me delete that. I just wanted to see. But uh, also, let me pull it out one more time. You pull out the Fibonacci. Uh, message me if you want the settings. But if you... um. Let me see here, 61.8. I just wanted to show you, like, I know this is already hindsight, but look look how price was respecting on that 61.8. At this level, stopped here, pivoted here, you know, basically is just kind of consolidating. We don't know yet because the market is opening, but it kind of like stopped right here, turned back around a little bit on a daily, I mean on a four hour. But look, it's all lining up on the 61.8. So you can, so guys just go through the basics and get to the point where you can learn a Fibonacci because prices be hitting on these Fibonacci's and, and that can be another confirmation for you guys to get into these trades easier. Also, Andrew, this is another way that you can enter into a trade. This is not the only way, but this can be a confirmation for you to enter into a trade once you get to this point. So go through the basics, master that and Fibonacci be right around the corner for you just to give you some more extra confirmation. It always throws so me do. off as to where to place it. Yep. So we can, we can do a training on that. Yep. So one of my Saturday trainings, I got you. But um, so this is what I'm looking at for this one. Bounce back down here. Or if it continue to go back up, we always looking for what? That retest. A retest going to happen somewhere. And, I, and we just got to be watching for it. It might not happen right exactly like this. It might happen down here. It might happen up here, but we don't know. But you at least mark it up somewhat so you can kind of find it within here. All right. So that's what we're looking at for GBP USD, these moves right here. All right. Now, GBP CAD, what we got? So this is what I marked up last week. Okay, for you guys. I said it was on this big trend. You guys were saying it was barbecue chicken. You know, and some some of us got in. I actually took the trade on a Sunday um, against my what I usually do, but I took it and, and scalped what I saw was dropping. So, but it definitely uh, broke through this trend line. You see how it was respecting this trend line, broke through, and then came up and retested in that zone area and dropped off again. Okay, so this is just basic stuff. Nothing on here is advanced. Maybe these little indicators with these, uh, uh, you know, uh, pivot points, but it, re, uh, it came up and respected in the zone, dropped back down, came back up again. Look, it's just like, look at the power of these zones. Like, guys, identify these zones because definitely you keep them there all week long and it's just keep bouncing, keep bouncing, keep bouncing on that demand zone. Why, why we call this a demand zone, man? Because price is just exploding through here. Eventually, it's gonna break. Eventually, this this demand zone is constantly keep getting touched, keep getting touched, and it's gonna break. And boom, that's what we got. I thought the break was gonna happen here, so that's why I drew that line here. It didn't happen here. It happened here. I also was ready for it to bounce up here. It came up, but it, it really didn't break through. It was definitely in a uh, in a seller's market. I mean, we knew that really it was a seller's market because it broke the trend line right here, this upper trend line. So we knew it was definitely in the seller's market, but I just wanted to be ready. And my, um, so that's how I played out last week from what I drew up. So we'll be looking for, we'll be looking for now on GBP CAD for the guys that care about it. Um, let me see here. We definitely not gonna chase this. I'm definitely not gonna get in this sale. Okay, so we gotta wait for a retest somewhere. If it if it pulled back so deep like this, I mean, every time it dropped off, right, it always gonna pull back. I don't know how deep, but I gotta be ready. So let's mark it up. Where would I mark it up at? Hmm. Let me pull out my pivot points. We already at the support too, and it's trying to turn back around. We'll see, we don't know yet. It could go all the way down to what level? This thing could probably drop a little bit more. 
right up into to this little level right here. See that little bit up in there? So it could just drop some more. Hit that support. We'll see. We'll watch it. Um, so, yeah, I'm just definitely, I'm not definitely interested in getting to no trade with this one right now, GBP CAD. I got to watch this, see what levels it hit, if break. If it start uh, hitting at this level right here where you see all of this support, I mean, this resistance at. So it, the floor, I mean, the ceiling up here might become a floor right up in here. And so if it does, we'll just reverse that back up to this pivot point, And we'll watch it from there. So. That's what I'm gonna look for right there. So I'm gonna mark this up real quick and then this will be my last pair to show you guys and I'm gonna put this in a uh, screenshot into Discord. All right, let me put this. Ten thousand, put it across. We got that marked up, and we just have to wait. We just have to wait and see. Um, could go here, it could go all the way back up, but we'll we'll see. So that's where that's what I'm looking for with the GBP cat. I'm not really interested in getting in with this one. I'm definitely interested in. Let me see. Hopefully, remind me tomorrow. I'm definitely interested in looking at the EUR USD and the GBP USD. So those are the ones I'm really watching closely, um, but I will occasionally look at this one. All right, so that's my pair, guys. I hope that was this was informative for you guys. Um, um, you know, don't forget to share these to your team, to your people, uh, the, the screenshots and Discord and everything. And, um, and hopefully we can keep adding value to you guys. I'm going to hand this over to Kurt. And, um, hey, let's make this money, baby. Peace. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yep. Yes, sir. Uh, cool. Yep. All right, all right. So... Y'all know me. I can talk. So I'm going to make it real short and sweet today. <laughs> if y'all give me free reins, I'm going to be in this bed with both of my gums. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a few pairs that I'm interested in. Let me go ahead and just plain jam my chart real quick and get it ready for y'all. Okay. Cool. All righty. Screen share. Desktop. Game time. All right. Just want to make sure everything is legit. Move all of this stuff out of the way. I get spoiled too. Like when I do like streaming and I'm not at home, like I get to like have the two screens so I can just man I can maneuver stuff and manipulate everything and just oh my goodness, it's like it's like heaven. All right, cool. I got my chat up. I got everybody's faces I can see. For those who do have their camera on, Doctor Bacon, I see you in there. D got the cold water. All right, so. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down a few yeah. pairs that everybody loves to talk about and everybody loves to trade. And I'm not a big fan of USDJPY, but <laughs> I know everybody loves it. It's like, oh, USDJPY, it's so fun to trade. And you know what? I'm not even going to knock it because it's it's really cool for like a, a new person who wants to just kind of get their feet wet and understand how strong the US dollar really is. Another thing I want to kind of like touch on before I really go into detail of how I mark this up and remove all of this stuff. I was messing around earlier showing this off to a couple of my people. Okay, so another thing about the USD that a lot of people don't really understand is that when the dollar moves, it affects every other pair. And I mean, like, not, not, not directly, but like in an indirect way. So like, once the dollar strengthens, it almost puts a lot of strength on other pairs as well, as well because you got to think of it in the sense of our money helps make them makes the world move basically like it just is what it is the u.s dollar is sitting in banks all over the planet so when a dollar strengthens it gives a lot of a lot more strength to other nations whose currency isn't as strong as the dollar so, is that because 
is the uh, a reserve currency of the world or something or not not so much of the world but it's just that our dollar fluctuates through the world a lot because of how we've set everything up like with the petrol dollar a lot of people needed to get gasoline through saudi arabia the petrol dollar deal stated that they could only buy uh oil from saudi arabia through u.s dollars so no matter where you from you were from in the world you could be from australia the uk new zealand it didn't matter you had to have u.s dollars not even buy gasoline from saudi arabia saudi arabia is one of the largest distributors of oil so in turn it basically made every nation say well in order for us to even get gas for our economies and our nations we got to keep U.S. dollars on hand. We need U.S. dollars no matter what's going on. So we kind of like twisted the world's arm and said, ha ha, you got to use our money. But <laughs> a lot of people are getting away from that now. So, you know, like even China doesn't even use uh, gasoline from Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. It's a whole bunch of stuff. Like the world is changing real fast and we're starting to get left in the dirt. This is why you see the dollar going through what it's going through a lot of times where you can see here on a daily, the dollar has been doing what? Just really dropping, right? We can even go to the weekly. And you see dollars just been pretty much dropping, pull back, drop off. It's, you know, and it started way back in what? 2000 and, I'm pulling up all kind of crazy charts. 2015, I think this was somewhere back here. Yeah, 2015, this thing has been just tanking ever since. So a little pull back, another drop off. But for the most part, the dollar's been kind of having a rough time. So we'll go back to the daily real quick. Now, USD JPY isn't a bad pair. It's just for me, it doesn't do exactly what I want my pairs to do. So I'm going to mark this up on the daily first and give you guys an understanding of what I'm looking for typically. Now, for the most part, I'm just trying to find areas that are near price, meaning right where the last candle is forming. I want to make sure I'm not getting something way out of the way. And I'm like, oh, okay, it had a high way back here. And, you know, you know, June 2017, and I'm going to use that right now. That's not going to help me right now. That's not going to give me anything I need to need, need done at the moment. So it makes no sense to go all the way that far back. So what I'm going to do is find engulfing candles near certain areas where I know price has had issues recently. So now I'm going to look right here where price dropped off. Boom, had a nice engulfing and did what? Dropped back below and broke. And when it came back, it retested the bottom of this engulfing and made a new engulfing here. Prime example here. And here, made an engulfing that popped up here, right? So now, this area here shows me that there are levels that need to be broken in order for this to go to the upside. Or this may be a nice resistance area where price will hit here and start to push back below our 100 moving average. So right now, this is a good enough zone for me on the daily for, for price to be respecting this level. I'm going to look directly below, and then right here, was an area where price retested here on an engulfing. So now I'm going to mark this up from here and here. And now I'm going to make sure that I really just want to pay attention to these immediate zones. So something from here to here is fine for me. And another area from here to here is also fine for me. So that's all I need right now for the daily. I'm not about to go through and say, oh, there was one here. Oh, there's another. Down. It's, it's too much extra information. I just want to make sure I'm paying attention to the zones that I need to pay immediately, immediate attention to go down to the four hour. And now we have areas where I can say, OK, so now when price gets to these zones, I'll start looking for, you know, immediate reactions from the candles and see if I can start finding engulfings to the downside and golfing to the upside. And for people who are new. And you guys hear us talk about engulfing candles all the time and different little tools that we use with the charts. I'm going to like give you guys a real, real fast example of how powerful engulfings are. Okay. Just something quick, fast, not a big deal, but just, I want you to see, like, I mean, I can literally just scroll back as far as I want to and just stop this thing anywhere and find an engulfing and show you. But these engulfings that I'm talking about will start to pay dividends for you. Like right here, right? This is just random engulfing, right? Big candle, look left, it engulfed pretty much these two candles here. Didn't get this one because this one was opened a little bit higher than this candle. So what I want to do is kind of pay attention to these two. And I just want to show you how powerful these are. Now I'm going to put my zone here and here, right? Now, it's a little far, right there. Okay, now from this area, this is what I want you guys to understand. If I'm looking for trades and I'm telling myself, this is my area for engulfing, nothing can close below this area because I'm looking for a buy opportunity. I want price to break out of here, 
come back, retest this area, and go upward. That's all I'm looking for. That's it. Now, if something closes below this area, right, the moment I got a candle closing below, I'm looking for a price to retest this line or this zone and then pull back down again. Okay, now what happens? Price broke out of here. I found my zone using these two candles. And now with a price who came back, nothing closed below here, still a valid buy opportunity. Boom, goes back to the upside, looking good. Now I'm trying to get price pulling back down. Another engulfing, pushing to the downside, right? Prime example, just for argument's sake, let's just drop a line here for an engulfing, right? And now we know nothing can close on the other side of this now because we have an engulfing push into the downside. What happened? Price came back up, retested, didn't close, just pushed up, left a wick, and then pushed back down. Right into our zone, we're still saying, okay, we got price trapped inside of these two areas now. One or the other has to happen. Either it's going to break below or our account is going to close below this line or it's going to respect and bounce back higher and test this. And either we're going to be in a range or we're going to have a breakout somewhere. Price came to this level, pushed up higher, came back, and then we got this candle right here. Closed below our area and told us that the market wanted to drop lower. Now, from here, we need to get a retest. So this candle happened. This candle came back and retested our zone. And then we got our entry candle here to push down for the sale and drop straight down. Okay. Now, once all this takes place and all this happens, these zones are less powerful now. They have less strength because they've been broken. Okay. So now when price comes back, we're not expecting this zone to hold true and is going to keep pushing away. We've already had a breakout, retest, and drop off. So now we're going to keep seeing price do what? Push higher, come back, push, retest it again, and broke clean through this entire candle, went through this entire zone. And once this candle closed above our area, what did it do? This candle formed, left a little wick right here, retested, and took off to the upside. Now, you can see price is doing what? Formed a new what? Engulfing candle here. Guess what we do? Here and here, All right? New zone, price took off and guess what? Retest of our area, boom, straight to the upside. Okay guys, this is why when you hear us talk about engulfing candles, we wanna make sure that you can see this and you start to get used to looking for those huge candles. It's not so much this candle, yeah. Think of it in the sense of 95% of people trade and they're all looking for the big candle, right? Where do I get in? Where do I get in? And they're not thinking everybody else is thinking the same way. You got to start asking yourself, what is the market not showing me? What am I not looking at? Okay. Once you start looking at it that way, you start to separate yourself from the 95% of people who trade. You start to see the market in a way where nobody else is looking at it. And now you can start to anticipate the moves that people aren't paying attention to where Okay. We had no idea this was happening. We had no idea this big candle was going to take off. All we knew was we needed to see it so now we could find our zones and react to the later move. Because mind you, this was a nice push away, right? This is a nice takeoff. And a lot of times guys will be like, man, I missed a big move. Oh, man, I'm always missing a big move. I don't know how to get in on those big moves, guys. You got to stop trying to chase the market. Just know when you see these big push offs like this, these giant breakouts, they're going to come back to retest. Okay, this is where patience comes into play. This is where that mindset of not chasing the market, not getting down on yourself, not feeling like, oh man, I'm missing out. Everybody's eating but me. Just be patient. The market will come back. And what happened? Your retest, boom, took off. Even higher than the previous move gave us even more movement, right? Because we were patient. All right, now one thing I want to show you guys as well. Let me just draw this out from here to here and show you guys something. From here to here, right? Let's just uh, cut that, take off all that extra line off. All right. Oh, no. I don't know who's got their mic unmuted. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Yeah, please mute that. You're watching cartoons or something in the background. I mean, oh, all right. Something going on back there. There we go. Okay. That was me. That's all good. All right. So you go ahead, go ahead and mute up for me though, bro. Shit. Um, how do I do? 
I got it. I'm not even in that room no more, so we can. All right, so look. I'm not the uh, host. That's why I can't do it. All right, cool. All right, so look. You see this move here, this nice push to the upside, this A to B move. I wanted to show you guys, where even where the retest took place, typically this move will be equal to the second push, right? So from here to here, we got our push from here to here. Look at what we got. Almost the same distance, right? I can't make this stuff up. So we need to let the initial move go. Do not chase it, okay? Let it go, but have your zone ready for that retest. And now from here to here, you knew exactly how long to stay in that trade because of what? We already got this move right here, okay? We saw that move happen. We knew we had an engulfing. We found our area, waited for retest. Boom, boom, same distance, okay? I can't, I'm not making this up. I'm not trying to be all, more, we literally just scrolled back and randomly found one, right? No big deal, nothing, nothing fancy. I just want you guys to be able to really see how powerful this training is and how you can really benefit from this, okay? Like, don't skip out on marking your charts up, okay? I know it's easy to just say, oh, man, I just wait for the swipe trades, bro. I ain't got to do all this. I'm good. I'm going to sit back, get swipe trades, use a scanner, and I ain't got to worry about none of that. Listen, if you don't understand structure, the swipe trade is not going to help you, okay? If you don't understand what's really happening in the market right now, all of the tools that we're sending out to you, they're fun and they're great. You can make money with them, but I'm going to make sure you guys can really feed yourself at the end of the day, okay? I don't want you depending on any – I don't even want you depending on me. I want you to pick back and be like, hey, remember that time we had training? Yeah, I do that on my own now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see this on I see this on my own. I don't, I don't need a whole lot of talking to. So go back to the front. All right. Now we're back here in the beginning of the chart. Four hour time frame, USD JPY. I'm telling myself right now, I want to be patient because now let me zoom in a little bit just so you can see what I'm looking at. Right now, I have an engulfing candle right here that have, that pushed to the upside. Now, what's happening now is price could not close below this candle zone, right? And what happened? Price closed below, came up, and now we're testing this area here. Okay? I want to see what's truly about to happen now where if price is going to stay below this zone and start pushing back to the downside, or are we going to get another break into this area? Excuse me, maybe then engulf into the upside and then a push away. So now I'm gonna make sure that we're all on the right page when we take these next few trades. But like I said, it's early in the day, it's early in the week. I'm not trying to jump the gun on anything. Usually I don't get into a trade until Tuesday because I need more data. Like we all take a survey right now. Since the banks just opened up a few hours ago, you guys know what the market's about to do, right? Like you guys already know what the bank's about to do, right? I know Dr. Bacon, no, he always making all the money. I know, I know, I know Mike know, you know, he walking around here listening to cartoons, so he got he got time to spare. He got he got time to buy fake mustaches. You know what I mean? So you can you could do all the stuff you can do right now. Where, where's my money, man? Where's my money? You got you got money to buy fake mustaches. <laughs> stop, man! Stop. All right, all right, all right. But no, seriously, seriously, you know, guys, I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying because we don't know what the market's gonna do. We have no idea what the banks are doing on Sunday, right? And mind you. This ain't even the bank you want to trade with. We're looking at the Australian banks right now. Listen, I'm not against anybody from Australia, but your banks ain't moving that kind of money right now. I don't need to be involved, okay? I'm not against anybody in, in, in the Tokyo session. I'm not, I'm not, listen, I love Japan. You guys are amazing, all right? But <laughs> you're not moving enough money for me to be involved with that time of day. So why get into the market simply because I'm excited? And number one, excitement falls into the emotional category. We know we cannot trade emotional. OK, so I get it. The market is opened up. We're ready to get it going. We, we hyped up. We amped up. But we got to We got to stay even keel. We got to stay on that level where, hey, my emotions cannot make decisions for me, period. All right. Because trading is one of those things where you are literally fighting against your own human nature. Every day, this is this. Is, and I always tell people like it's not for everybody. You have to be a certain kind of person to know you have to start to snap off some of those things that become comfortable for you. That, 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 that emotional decision-making process that a lot of us don't pay attention to that we do from time to time, trading calls that out. It, it brings that to the forefront quick. And you got to be able to say, hey, I can't make a decision in this mindset right now. I need to step away from the chart. Or, hey, I need to sit down and just go back and study a little bit so I can get a better understanding. It's something I'm not seeing. And that starts to bring you back into that mindset of, okay, we're doing this for a reason. 
All right. So it's not always just about the money. It's about it's a lot of personal development inside of trading as well. Hey, can you yeah. show me that number at the top of your zone there? The one that's out of the screen at the top? Uh this over to the very right. Yeah, all all the way to the top. Let me see if I can do this for you. Does that help? No, I need the number that's on the top of the blue zone at the top. Oh, the top of the blue zone. Okay. My bad. Here we go. All right. I thought I was missing something on my screen. You can see. You all good? Yes, sir. Sweet. All right. So I'm going to go down to the 30 minute really quick. And I want you guys to really see what I'm seeing right now. I put this line here for a reason. When we get to the 30 minute, we're going to start seeing a whole lot more information that you're going to be able to start to decipher. Okay. So 30 minute. Now we got a much larger picture. We we're looking on in that four hour. All those four hour candles broken into small little chunks now. Okay. And lo and behold, what we got here, an engulfing candle to the downside, right? But at the same time, we have an engulfing candle to the upside right here. So now we're getting like a macroeconomic picture of what's happening because at the moment, nothing can technically close below this level here, right? We got an engulf into the upside, right? Let me move this down just so you can see what I'm seeing. Right here, and price is moving away, retesting, and now pushing back up. And now we also have an engulfing to the upside right here. Nothing close above this area. So now we got, we got a standoff with price right now, right? And something, because this candle engulfed pretty much these two, this candle engulfed this area here, so now we're looking at an actual standoff with price where something has to break one of these zones right here, okay? And this is where going through the multiple time frames starts to, play, starts to play a bigger role now. You're not just wondering and guessing. You're like, ooh, we, I'm in some consolidation, but something needs to happen inside of one of these zones. And I know the moment I get a breakout went through one of these areas, I can simply wait for a retest, boom, and go to the upside, okay? Also, your risk management now is much more efficient because we still have rules, right? If something breaks this area, right, and comes back and retests, it can no longer close below this zone now, right? So now guess what? Our stop losses can be a lot closer, meaning our risk management is a lot more efficient. So now we know the moment we get in, we're catching price making a real strong push out of one of these areas, okay? Because now the rules and the structure of the market are on our side. We're not guessing, saying, mm, I wonder if it's going to stop or start right here. We're like, nah, man, I got too much information right now. I got data on my side. I'm not guessing. I have information that is powerful, and it lets me make a strong decision that I know once I do get my movement, I'm going to take a dominant push from that position. Okay. Technical analysis. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm not a big fan of the, of the USDJPY. I'm really not. But I just wanted to show you guys – how powerful this really is and how much it can truly help you if you just stay patient and you start letting the market really give you what you're looking for. Now, the one thing I will say is this does look like a strong buy. I'm not about to, I'm not even about to hold you up because back here, we had a very large engulfing to the downside and price continued to test and test. And we finally got a break right here and price pushed higher and came back down. But we're, we've never broken this level here. We broke this area, but we never broke this level here. So now I'm thinking we could just continue to see another push, and we're just getting a good retest of this engulfing here that began this upward move, okay? So even though I'm watching these engulfings happen all over here, I have to look left to make sure I'm not giving away enough of my position, okay? I'm not, I'm not just being biased over what I see here. Always look left and get as much information as you can, and now we can make a strong push from there. And then if anything – we can just see price go from here and maybe come up to this area and stop before we, have, before we have another push back to the downside because here, there's just a slew of engulfing downward camp, a bearish engulfings here. Right. Where we can just see retest, drop off, and, all, and it would just make sense because now we're testing a daily zone that price wants to push away from. So just give it time. Be patient. Let the market move. And like I said, this is like literally this time of day. It's a Sunday night. Like there's not going to be any – oh my God, moves that's going to happen in the next few minutes. You know what I mean? London session may start up and we can get some strong pushes, but from there, 
that's pretty much the only thing I really want you guys to start looking out for. Now, last week, and I'm going to go to the next pair, too. Uh, where is GJ? Everybody loves GJ. And we're going to just plain Jane it. All righty. Start off on the daily. Okay, so before I get into the GJ analysis, I wanted to say this to you guys. Last week, I went over a few things with, uh, with the team, and I wanted to break this down for some of you guys on here now. Like I guess you may be new. You may have no idea what we're talking about. You know, fresh from trade and get paid. Facebook group, and you're like, let's just see if these guys know what they're talking about. You know, we may be watching the recording, but I want to break something down for you guys. There's something called the gambler's fallacy that I think a lot of us need to be actually paying attention to because we have habits in our life that will creep into certain things unbeknownst to us because we've been used to doing things a certain way. Okay. Now the gambler's fallacy dictates that if you flip a coin, you know, 10 times, five of those flips should be heads and five of those flips should be tails. Right. Now, if I decide to flip a coin right now in front of you guys and I flip it in the first five, our heads, and I flip it the sixth time, the sixth one should be, get what? We can write in the chat, you know, doesn't really matter. The sixth one should be what? Everybody's probably, probably just saying tails, right? Makes sense. The sixth one should be tails. This is where a lot of people start to kind of get into this mindset of, okay, after so many trades or after so many chances, after so many tries, my luck has to turn around, right? Something has to switch up. This is where I want you guys to understand this when I ask you this question. What makes the six coin flip more important than the first? Nothing. Not one thing. Nothing. Not one thing. So now, once we have this mindset that the six coin flip is no different from the first, you could be six trades winning, right, in a row. The seventh trade comes up. Does fate dictate that you're going to win that seventh trade, or does it dictate you're going to lose that seventh trade? This is where a lot of people start to run into this mental mindset of we've been carrying around this superstition of odds. Something has to turn around. Murphy's the fates law. have to have to help me, right? Yeah, we have, anything that could go wrong, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. You have to start thinking in the mindset of there is no dictating force behind the entries and exits of our trades. Anything can happen, okay? Sometimes the market will flat out just chop you up. It's just a part of the game. But this is where risk management comes into play, right? This is when you, when you start researching some of the most wealthiest traders on the planet that's making bill, and I mean billions. These guys are making a killing. Like I've been, I've been doing my studying on these dudes because I want to be one of the best traders on the planet. I feel like Derrick Rose, like, why, why can't I be MVP of the league? I don't, I don't understand why I can't just be the best trader on the planet. I don't, I don't see why I can't. But when you research these guys, the trades that they take, the risk management that they exercise, three to one, four to one, five to one. They don't even take two to one trades. So they could lose with the five to one odds. They could lose eight trades, win two and break even. And they won't take trades outside of those risk managements. This is where you start to really see behind the curtain now where it's not about how big the move was. It's about how much were you willing to risk just to get in. That's where it goes, where you can have 10 L's and just get two wins and you broke even. That's the, that's the way we want to start teaching everybody how to trade. Those are the methods that we want to start getting into where the odds are going to be on your side because now you're not depending on random, not random numbers. You're saying, look, I'm playing this game the smart way. Warren Buffett says you're going to lose, but just make sure your winners are a lot bigger than your losers. And it all comes down to having in your mindset that it's okay to lose a trade. It's okay to lose five trades. Because if your risk management is right, you're not sweating it. You're not crying. And mind you, I can ask anybody in this chat right now. Whenever you lost a trade, whenever you felt bad, what was your life size looking like? That's it. Everybody go ahead and smile and nod. Everybody knows. That last size was way out of control. And you told yourself, I shouldn't even been. Well, I keep doing this to myself. You keep on doing the same thing because you have this, this vision in your head that every trade is the home run trade. Every move is the best move ever. You're going, you're going, this, this is the trade that's going in all accounts and only you see it. Right? Like, Man, I kind of feel like you're calling me out right there. <laughs> hey, it's, 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 this is not a jab. It's not a jab. Oh, anymore. I know. I know. <laughs> But I, I want it's, it's not just you. This is like a universal thing. Like a lot of us go through it. I went through it. You know what I mean? And I want you guys to know that 
the things that you question yourself about, the things, the self conversations that you have when you're looking at that account and you sitting there watching those charts and you talking to yourself mentally, they're all having that same mental, that mental battle where you got to shut that voice up in, your, in the back of your mind saying, I don't know, it might go this way. Mm. You got to stop, get more data if it doesn't make sense. And this is the thing too. If you're looking at a trade, like if you're looking at a chart, right, like on this daily, can you tell me what this, what the overall trend of this, of this, of this market is right now? If it takes you longer than five seconds, don't trade it, right? This is the daily, so this is this is a little skewed. But if it's like this, is like an hour chart or a four-hour chart, and you can't gauge the overall trend, don't trade it. If it takes you longer than if you gotta look at it and squint, don't even do it. <laughs> don't don't even do it. That's just the real. Like I'm not about to even kind of give you this super technical answer. If you gotta go. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. It's, it's, it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. Now, if I showed you something that looked like that looked like this, right? Like you're, you're looking at this chart saying, oh, this is clearly yeah, falling that's off the cliff. Yeah. You're not yeah. up or down. Yeah, you, you're looking at this saying, oh, this is clearly falling off the cliff here. So I know what I should be looking for. I should be looking for dominant sale opportunities as the market's moving. Ta-da! You know, all right, there you go. Now, here at the beginning, this is literally on your mark, get set, terrible. It makes no <laughs> sense to set yourself up for that. So you got to be careful when you start looking at charts. And you, I want to make sure that you guys are just using common sense a lot of times. Oh, and, I, and that's why I went into the gambler's fallacy first, just to make sure that you guys understood that a lot of times, inadvertently, we will come out of the gate with a bias because of how we think based off our past experiences. Okay. So I just want to make sure I touch on that. Now, I'm going to do something real funny with GBP JPY really quick. And I just want you guys to follow along with me really quick. And this is like a real fast one candle thing. You can look forward on the four hour or the hour, even a daily. And you're going to laugh when you see it every time. Okay. So just follow with me for a second. I'm going to drop these Bollinger bands on here and boom. I even got the default ones on just, just to even make it even funnier. Actually, I'm going to go to mine. I don't even want to, I don't even want to play around with y'all. I'm going to go right to my settings. Yeah, my settings for Bollinger Bands are 15 and 1.75 because I like my um my bands to be a little bit tighter. Like, I actually see if I can move this. You see how they are now? Like, they have, like, a little bit of room. Like, the candles are, like, inside looking all cute and snug, hugging the edges of the bands. And I switched mine to 15 so you can see the difference. Now it's tighter. Like, I got them bouncing right off the bands, giving me the moves I really want to see off the edges, right? Not so much wiggle room. I want tight entries, tight exits. All right. Wait. Okay. So right here, what I want you guys to notice is when the candles get close to the edge here, start looking for these right here. Let me zoom in for you. Right. Oh, it's always that. Right here. This is a nice little pin bar candle here or almost like a doji. I want you guys to start looking for these right near the edges of the Bollinger Bands bottoms or the tops and i want you to start really paying attention to it when you find them when they start closing outside of the bollinger bands that next candle is going to come roaring back in and i mean roaring back in like it's, it's hilarious like i'll go back and see, we'll see if we can find another one like it's so funny right here right one of these is like right on the edge roaring back in let's see if we can find another one they're like all over the place too like you'll find sharp moves right on the edge roaring back in <laughs> Like right outside, boom, right back in, right on the edge, roaring back in, right. And I, I just, I mean, this is this is the daily, mind you. There are a crazy amount of pips in some of these moves. Just when you start finding these candles, these little small pin bar style candles, right on closing outside of the Bollinger Bands, you'll start to see it and make a lot of smart decisions from those zones. Okay, so that's just one thing. Now we're here, GBP JPY, we're on the daily. Price has already made a crazy move last week. Like, this thing ran away from us on Friday. Like, it was wild. Like, everybody was going crazy. I know Dr. Bacon sent me that screenshot of a GA. I was like, bruh, you're killing me right now. You're killing me. I mean, his entry was noise. <laughs> so, I'm going to make sure that every time Dr. Bacon take a trade, we all taking history. <laughs> but nah, nah, nah. So, I wanted to show you guys that right now the market's moving really strong to the downside. And I've noticed that back here, it had an engulfing that I was really paying attention to 
for like a good week, right? Like right here, this had my attention so tough. And I was like, man, this thing is really a strong in golf in here. Like it wasn't the beginning of the move, but inside of here, I knew price was going to have to make a decision. And literally on the daily, it just broke out and it stopped like right inside of here. And I'm thinking, okay, cool. We're done. Here's things about to break straight away. And it literally bounced here. It gave me a retest where I thought this next candle was going to just straight drop off. And no, sir. It came right back, closed inside the zone, pushed back up, and then came roaring back out again. And I'm like, dude, this thing faked me out for a full week and then gave me the move I was looking for at the last minute. And this is why I said a lot of times if I have a bias because of what I saw here, it cost me. Instead of me just taking what the market was giving me, I started looking for the turnaround inside. Oh, I kept looking for sell opportunity, sell opportunity. And it, it literally rolled all the way up into the last part of the week, like Thursday and Friday, and it ran away from me here. Okay, so this is where I want you guys to really start having those bias-free looks in the market. Now, here is where I'm looking at now for my next zone to be tested, right in here. This is the next area I really want to see price make a decision at because inside of this zone was crazy. And even in the past, what happened? Price respected, respected, and finally, this candle blew. I would have loved to been on this one. This candle blew through this zone completely, right? Came back retested, broke away, and we back inside the zone. And it just rattled around, pushed above, came back, pushed back out, respected, respected, slightly pushed in and came right back out. So now I want to see if price gets back to this level, will it bounce and go back to the upside? Or will it just break straight through, right? So what I want to see is, because price broke out of here with this engulfing and did what? Came back, retested, it took off. We may be looking for another retest here or a breakout or a breakthrough, I'm sorry to the downside now mind you we're still in the daily time frame so i'm going to leave this here because this area was valid even though it kind of messed around and my new area that i want to see price get to is down here yes it's a, a few hundred pips away but this is a very valid zone for me now i'm going down to the four hour now inside of here i'm just going to look left and see what areas do i need to pay attention to and inside of here I just had price literally just ran away from here all the way. I've never even wanted to move below the middle Bollinger band, literally just top, middle, top, middle, top, middle, top, mid, over and over and over. Finally came down to the bottom Bollinger band and just skyrocketed. Right. And this is where I want, want you guys to see how, how powerful structure is too. I'm going to draw a trend line from here to here. Put the ray back on. Here we go. Look at that. Look at what happened. Price skyrocketed, right? Kept moving higher, kept moving higher, right? Started to pull back down, broke through our zone and broke through our trend line, tested it right here and pushed even lower. And then it came back up and kept retesting it, bouncing away, retesting it, bouncing away, retesting it, bouncing away. And finally broke off and then broke below as well. I can't make this stuff up, okay? I'm just showing you guys how powerful structure is once you have your charts marked up. Do not skip out on marking up your chart, okay? This is very, very important. All right, guys, so I'm gonna go back. And the reason why I started here and I did this is because all you have to do is just take one, two, go right through. Literally, that's it. You wanna do trend lines, find your wicks, connect them, one, two, Go right through. Don't try to do extra, extra, extra. If it moves away from it, that's fine. You don't have to keep trying to find a new one. If it's a consistently strong uptrend, use your Bollinger Bands, use your MACD, find your strong entries, right? We had Bollinger Band respecting these middle lines over and over and over. The moment we had a break and we got a really good entry, our MACD came right through for us. Price scooped down below. The moment price came back above with this here, our bar here, this is the first time we had an entry where price dipped below and literally it was right in this area here, right where we had the perfect entry for it to bounce and go to the upside, right? And then the exact same thing here, engulfing candle, right? Just for argument's sake, let's just mark up a zone, right? Engulfing candle, price broke down this area. Nothing could close below here. It did actually close below and pull back to the upside, broke back out of our zone, and kept moving to the upside, hit this area again, large candle. Every time something had to break this area, it had to be a large candle. 
every time we had a break of our bottom area here, this bottom line, large candles broke out of this and large candles broke inside. This is how you know you're at a strong level of structure when you keep seeing, when you keep seeing engulfing candles take place near this zone. Okay. So now we have, oh, now we have our zones marked up on the four hour. Let me make this a little smaller. This is still an area we are paying attention to. Trend line has now moved away. Same thing here. If I wanted to draw a trend line straight down, literally the rules will still apply, right? One, two, go right through. And we can literally watch price from here, drop down, bounce off of this, bounce off of this, and then finally come back to the upside potentially from here. So I want to make sure you guys really understand how powerful this is and how we, how we use everything to our benefit. We don't let any of this of these movements and this information go to waste. Now we're still on a four hour. Let's go down to the 30 minute and get a full picture of what's really happening. Okay. Now, right now, the market had a huge drop off right before the uh, market started to close out on Friday. And that London session leading towards the end of the week was just wild. I mean, this thing ran like from here all the way down to here. It was like 184 pips, like just took off. All right. That was like vacation money mixed in with a little bit of like car note. Right. That thing ran. So <laughs> I just wanted to show you all like how how much we, we actually well, Dr. Bacon jumped in on this. I was tired and I missed out on that trade. I'm still kicking myself for that, that whole move. So now with our trend lines in place, right, we have the market showing a structure all over the place now. So now all we have to do is just take from our markets from our higher time frames and use our lower time frames to really execute and find really clean and precise entries based off of the data that we have from the past. So at the moment right now, price is above – but if it breaks out to the bottom or to the upside, we know exactly how far price tends to want to go because of all the structure we have in place from the higher time frames. Right. Now, right now, you see we're just dealing with just nothing right now. Like, it's just sideways, no big deal, not a whole lot of volatility from Friday leading into Sunday right now. It's just kind of just dead at the moment. So I don't want you guys jumping the gun, trying to jump into any trades now. But use the, use the, the Discord, you know, go in there, type in the trading, uh, Forex and Chill chat. You know, if you got questions, we'll answer them in there. Keep your eyes peeled for some of the things we got coming up with the uh, signals chat that we got going on. Now, I don't know if Dr. Bacon want to jump on and drop a little bit of knowledge. I'm going to open it up to him so he can do a little bit of uh, Q&A. And then once he's done, I'm going to uh, circle back and then we're going to go check out the news for the upcoming week. And then from there, you guys can go ahead and do your thing. So let me go ahead and stop sharing and open it up for you, my brother. And I'm going to mute up. And it's all yours, bro. It sound good, sound good. I didn't plan on saying anything tonight. I wanted to just sit back and re relax. Oh, but, no, I'm putting you to work, bro. It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm already getting put to work. So first, let me introduce myself to the team. I'm Dr. Bacon. They call me uh, Dr. Bacon because I'm really skilled in the forex market. I have um, uh, been training for about trading for about six months. Uh, I taught myself how to trade about seven months. Um, I am a naked for his charter, I don't chart at all. I mean, I may throw just a support and resistance line up there and take my trade off of that. Um, we were supposed to have uh, Joe do uh, GA, but I think I'm going to take GA if Curtis don't mind. I actually want to take a look at GA. I just got done doing another Zoom call about this. So I am pretty much know Go right ahead, my brother. what GA is doing. Just, but, leave, uh, just leave EA for Joe. That's, that's his baby. Don't, don't touch EA. I won't touch EA, for, and that's my baby too, man. That's crazy. Like Curtis said. <laughs> That all has been pushing money through the market like crazy. And we've been catching some major setups, man. I grew my account so much with EA that it wasn't even funny. So let me uh, share my screen. And uh, I'm 23 years old, man. I never thought I'd be trading for it, man. Never, ever, ever in my life thought I'd be trading for it. Um, everybody always said, what made you get into it? And I'd be like, man, it's money. Man. Sorry, as you can see, I'm looking at GA right now as we speak. GA. So uh, this is what I made my major move off of earlier in the week. Uh, I traded off the four hour and the one hour, uh, just off a of support and resistance line. That's it. And I trade off the highs and the lows of pairs. Uh, this is how I make major, majorly major most of my money. Uh, so if I can, and I'm not using my computer at my own house, so please bear with me. I'm at a friend's house that let me use her computer, and I was really grateful for letting me use her computer. Can we mute up? Can we mute up, please? Uh, 
So let's see if we can get this to look a little better for you guys on the screen. Uh, so I trade off the highs and the lows of pairs. So as we can see, GA was pretty much going back up there, touching my resistance line over and over and over again. And every time they hit the, and this is, man, this is basic stuff. Like if you don't know this, you need to go back and, and we got the Discord set up so you can watch it on the beginning. Video that shows support resistance line. That's all I use, support resistance line. So this is clear, clean as day. We got this uh, resistance line at the top, the support at the bottom. And just in case somebody don't know what a support and resistance line, I'm gonna just go ahead and explain to y'all how it works. And I'm actually gonna do a scenario because my pastor gave a very, very good scenario of what a support is. I really don't have a good one for resistance, but I'm gonna try my best with y'all. So if you ever go home or you ever go to church or you ever go somewhere that you're not familiar with and you go sit down in a chair, you don't look at the chair and say, hey man, I'm gonna down this chair to see if it's gonna hold me up. No, you don't you don't look at the chair and inspect all the screws, all the nuts, all the bolts. You just sit down in the chair, right? You just personally sit down in the chair and hope that it holds you up. Well, that's what the market does. It just hopes that this price is going to hold and it's going to go up in the opposite way. That's pretty much what the support is. The resistance is, I kind of compare it to the glass ceiling. Uh, you know how uh, female workers at some point in time couldn't reach a certain paying level and it ended up breaking. Um, and uh, and uh, I don't know the year, but you know I compare it to the glass ceiling. So where it price couldn't get broke, but it eventually can break at a point in time. So GA was pretty much doing the same thing over and over again. It would give me that support and resistance line. It hit the high. As soon as it hit the high, what did it do? Barbecue chicken. That's what we call it. It gave me barbecue chicken all day. Same thing. Went back up. Barbecue chicken all day, man. It actually sounds good to some barbecue chicken from Jess. But anyways, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so I, uh, I, I just wanted to show y'all something real quick and simple because I'm not going to hold you along. I know Curtis. Curtis can keep going, and I can keep going too, because that's all I, I like to talk to people about forex, because that's how we make our money. So uh, as we can see, price broke my support line down here, and people are like, "Well, are you looking for this to continue down on a downtrend?" And I said, "No, look at what price did back here. It came down, broke it, and shot back up. So look, look what price is start, starting to do. It's starting to go right back up. So I'm expecting this thing to even put up the high and the low a little bit more longer." And now you're looking like, well, how do you know this is the high? All you got to do is look left, look left on the pair and see that price never came into the zone. Price never came into the zone, never came into the zone. It, it, it was nowhere near. So we consider that to be the high point. And Curtis said, I, Curtis made a really good, uh, a good, good analogy. He said, why, why pay attention to what's in the back when you when current price is right here? So this is all valid to me, all this right here between my support and resistance line, because this is what I can see as in within like the last three, I mean, last month, this is about uh, maybe about maybe a month and a half worth of work. But um, so another thing we're going to be paying close attention to, and I'm going to be paying close attention to, is my Aussie pairs, because I, I love Aussie pairs. I'm not going to overstep on drove toes on this, but I'm expecting price to continue to go up and hopefully, hopefully get back up on this, uh, this high and we can catch another down sale on this where if I made my 7000 I want y'all to clean up too. So uh, I'm not going to talk long. I just wanted to share, share some knowledge with y'all, what we're looking forward to with Dr. Bacon and what we're going to do with Dr. Bacon and how my strategies are kind of going to come to play with, uh, with uh, the team Take Profit. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy and so proud to be a part of this team because I love what you guys are doing. And uh, my other team was nothing compared to this, none, none at all. But I'm going to take some questions. Curtis said he wanted me to uh, – answer some questions for anybody who do have questions. So if you got any questions, unmute yourself and I'd I love to answer them. Anybody? Hey bro, so you saying that you gonna, Hello? yeah, so you saying you gonna, gonna hand it. can you hear me? I'm listening, I'm listening. Oh, so yeah, you yeah. saying, so you saying on GA, you gonna wait till it go all the way to the top and catch the sale? But nah, I, 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 I will. I, I'm going to potentially catch buys on this if I see price holds a pound. Or I'm gonna get the retest. I'm waiting for a retest on this uh support line. If I do see a retest on this support line, I will be getting in for some buys to go back up. But right now, where for this Sunday, I can't determine what the market is going to do. See how it did go. It went slightly below. 
Um, and I'm looking, and I look left, and I seen, hey, it went below, and it shot right back up, and then we got a couple of retests. So once I get a strong confirmation retest, we're going to catch this on the buy as well. We're not just going to look for the sell on this because that's a long way up. This was uh, almost 280 pips that I caught on this uh, downfall, and I don't want to wait to go back up 280 pips. That would be crazy. Look at this. That's 280 pips. That would be ridiculous to wait that long for an uh, opportunity to get in on a trade. So we're going to definitely catch some of this on the buy. I'm just waiting to see if this support line is going to hold. Is it going to hold as a resistance line or is it going to hold as a support line? That's all I'm waiting for. And it being Sunday, it's hard to determine. So um, I, at 1. Point, Does that answer uh, your question? At 1.83? You wouldn't, would you, would you uh, look at that as a zone area at where you see all them wicks at in the middle? That's like 1.8. You see what I'm saying? It's like you got them big shoot ups. Around here? Or you about, hey. Go up some more. Up, 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 right up, 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 right up in there. You see them wicks all in that yeah. zone area? So yeah. how, you, how you looking at that? So when I'm looking at this, you you could put another line right here because this could be another zone of resistance. You see how price kind of broke right here, it whipped out, and it came right back down. So you could you could actually throw another resistance line right there because you, you see that price has been marking up, going up, coming back down, going up, coming back down. Got you for sure. I I, I, would, I would even potentially see that price might could. Price could come back up here and fall back down, but I, I would, I would really, I mean, I would really love for this thing to go back up to the high. I, I mean, yeah. seriously, I mean, uh, I know I we can't, we can't always, we can't be that, that would be like a, go back a, a stop loss or a, a take profit line or something. If you had the skepticism that it's going to stop and reverse. Okay, so for, for this, when I took this trade, when I took this trade, I knew that price would have had to pass this this wick right here for me to lose this trade. So my stop loss, when I got into this trade on Friday, my stop loss was just above this wick. So I got in somewhere around, I got in somewhere around here and let's just do to this wick. My stop loss was about 45 pips. And, and as you can see, I got a 200 pip payout. So it was like a one to five, one to four ratio on this trade. Any more questions? I would have took that. Yeah, all day. All day. <laughs> that, that's, that, as we say, that's barbecue chicken. Barbecue chicken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> or as Bacon I, uh, says, so I mean, my, my strategy doesn't come. <laughs> that's Bacon. So my strategy doesn't come a lot where it comes off the highs and lows we notice, but pretty much when pairs are around this high and low demand zone, where it's pretty much at the low or at the high, you get things like this, where it's just, this is really all this is, is consolidation. It's a huge zone of consolidation, which is 200, 300 pips, but it does it over and over again. So you, you pretty much got a strong support and resistance line right there. And this is just, like you said, this is a barbecue chicken. And you gotta, you just gotta take this. There's no way you can't tell me you're not, you're, you're passing this up. You're taking this all day. But I'm yeah, so this, I, I like this. I actually didn't put this out. Who's this day? So, so Jay, did you did you actually mention this? This is actually I like this uh this one right here. We can actually probably see price even come back up to here and then yeah. get the drop off. So uh, if that was Jay, I really like that. Yes, sir. Yeah. For so sure. can can I if I can, if you don't mind, let me jump in right here just for a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah this is yours. Yeah, um, I, go ahead. Let me, uh, <laughs> No, I was not in a position where I where I was gonna be. Able to to but I'm glad I am now. Um. So just if you would just uh, let me share my screen. Okay, go ahead. All right, cool. Yeah, so man, look, we're appreciating uh, uh, Dr. Bacon. Man is on the squad now, so we're definitely uh, we're definitely excited that he's going to be, um, you know, a part of our a part of our trading team, and as far as actually helping us call out signals as well. So um, you know, Bacon, man, welcome to the team, bro. Thank you. Thank um, you. So yeah. let me let me just show you something real quick because you guys already know GA and EA. That's my thing. I love GA and EA. Probably Kurt said something when I walked away. Just if I know Kurt, he probably was no talking idea. about GA and EA. Yeah, I was like, listen, don't touch EA. That's his baby. That's that's like that's like that's like, that's like mowing his lawn. You don't want to get on mowing another guy's lawn. 
Joe, now, if I, you want to come on my lawn, that's okay. I'll let you do that. Joe, I'm um, not going to lie to you, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> no, but right listen, uh, for real, though, if you look here on um, GA, what, what, what Bacon was just saying is real – actually, let me go to trading view. So if you go to trading view, here's what – we were looking at that on the four-hour. Let me show you what it looks like on the four-hour. Um, let me move this out of the way. Uh, when you look at it on the four hour, you see that it just came back inside of the Bollinger band here. And you see right here where the, the nine moving average crossed over. Now here, look at this big candle right here. Now, now I, I know probably a lot of people would, would, um, tell me different. I don't know. But when you look at this candle right here, which started this, this move, you're look, look at all of that movement that it just it, it like literally engulfed like 368 candles or something like it, like it was such a strong move and because and here's the reason why it was such a strong move guys if you look at it on the day chart let me show you something on the day chart this boy has been climbing right if you look all the way back this thing has been climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing and um, in order to break such a strong trend, it takes a strong move, right? And, it, and it's literally up against a resistance zone that it hasn't been at in a long time until right here, right? So you got – if you look back, you're not going to see very many touches on this zone for a long time. So it came up, it tested the zone the first time, tested it again, tested it again, tested it again. Now you're, you're realizing that this is a strong zone. So what's happened here – Anybody who's done any kind of market geometry sees after a strong move up and then, and then consolidation, that's what's called a rectangle. And we have this rectangle pattern forming, which usually means continuation. And so usually when we see a rectangle like this, it usually calls for a continuation in the market. So, but watch this though. When you look at what's happening here after this, after this ranging, after the uptrend, after this you know, rectangle, we're looking for it to break this zone right here. We're looking for it to, once it breaks and closes on top of this zone, we're looking for a strong buy. But watch this. this. I'm on the daily chart. Look at my trend. Comes up here. Boom. Bounces off of my trend line. Plays around up here. Now look, it's coming back toward here. I do think, because look at this daily, even on the daily chart, the nine moving average just crossed over the middle Bollinger Band, and these are starting to widen out. So I do think we're looking at this thing going up, on the four hour, if you look on the four hour, I think we're going to see this climb just a little bit and test this zone. After such a redrop, you're looking for that retest. If you look at that retest, it's going to, it's going to retest right around your nine moving average. And I believe you're going to see a drop down to the trend line. However, again, we're not looking at an ultimate uh, sell here. We're looking at a continuation, I believe. So when you look at that, I think what we're looking at here, guys, um, is it, it testing a, a low, and then it's looking at a really strong buy coming off of the, um, the trend, off of the trend line here. And if you look, you'll see this trend line is sitting right around a, a, a zone here of support. So you're going to have some convergence there, and then we're going to be looking for this kind of move. Literally, a retest here. Coming down and then bouncing off of that, that trend line to go straight up to that continuation off of this rectangle. So what Bacon was just talking about, about catching that high and that low, he was looking at the four hour on the daily chart just confirms more of what he was just saying. Because it once it bounce off of our trend line here, and once we see it retest here, it's gonna break, you know, if we see it break through this zone, it keeps going. Then if we this is the big zone. If we see it break through this zone on the daily chart, it's a wrap. It's time, you know, by next week, we're going to be seeing, and even maybe this week, we're going to be seeing such a strong buy in um, GBP Australian dollar. So, guys, we're really looking at a couple of things here. We're looking at it uh, retesting the zone, coming down to test our trend line, coming back up to pull through these zones again. And if it does, that's three things we're looking for. If those three things line up and, it, and you see a, a candle close on the top of this zone right here where, where it's tried to test three times now, four times, and has not been able to break. But as soon as that boy closes on top of that zone, it's time to eat.
Everybody get right. There we go, Curtis. Then we're talking about barbecue chicken. It's time to get your bowls and your spoons and the cereal. Straight and, up. And, and, James and look, Harden. It's time to eat. So, in the meantime, somebody's commenting something. I don't know what you're commenting, but, yep, Bashari's like, love it, yes, because it's time to eat. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. But, look, anytime you see it closing inside of the Bollinger Band, you know you're going back to moving average. Right, so you know we're we're coming back to test this zone right now. So right now you're looking at a retest, and then a drop off, and then breaking this same line. Look right here. You can mark that zone, that level of support. One eight two one eight two six zero one, one eight two one one nine. Can okay, you a, screenshot this and drop this in the uh? In the, uh yeah, absolutely. I definitely will screenshot. Get, get, get your snipper. <laughs> get my snipper. Um. So basically. Once we see that retest off that trend line, it breaks through this zone, breaks through that zone, and we're going to be looking at that same zone. Is it going to just wick out on top of that zone again? Or, and, or are we looking at a real uh, candle closing outside the zone? And if it does, again, it's time to eat, right? And at the same time as we're looking at, guys, we want to be able to see what the Bollinger Bands are doing. Right now, you see how the Bollinger Bands just spread out, and you see where the market went, right? I'm telling you, you, if you want to eat on this over and over and over again, it's just real simple. Look at where your nine moving average is, and when you see it cross over your middle Bollinger Band, you know you're changing directions, and it is going to go to the other side of the Bollinger Band. And once you see that, we have to look. Are my Bollinger Bands pinched close like this, or are they spread out like this? If you, start, if you see them start to spread out, you know it's time to eat. When you see that crossover – and you see these things spreading out, you know it's time to eat that big move. And then as soon as you see these boys closing inside the Bollinger Band, it's time to close that move because we're looking at a retest, right? So right here, as soon as you saw that crossover, it was time to eat. Boom. Eat that all day. Stay full. Now it's time to get out of that, wait for the retest, and eat again down to the trend line. Once it hits that trend line, it's time to get out. Once it starts nearing that, then it's time to look what's going to happen here. I'm not getting in on this move because this I don't know. But once it, once I see it go up here, break this trend, break this zone, then I'm going to see. Okay, what happens next? Does it retest or does it keep going? Once it keeps going, I know you're like, man, but what about all these pips in between here? I get it, but those are not safe pips. Those are not safe pips. All you want safe pips. pips. You know what I mean? You want – like, look at this, guys. I I'll show you something. Watch this. You're talking about risk management. If you caught this right here, right, and you and once you've seen this red candle, you were risking 31 pips, right, 31 pips to in order – and really not even because you really were only going to the top of that zone because since you already knew you had your zone. So you were risking around 20 pips. Guys, that's 280 pips. 280 pips. Hey, Joe, can't you uh, publish that and link the link the chart? Yeah, yeah, I will. Screenshotting it. Yeah, I will. As soon as uh, as soon as we're done here, I will. That's barbecue chicken drop off right there. That's and and so and so, we don't know maybe 275 off the top, but we do know once we see that cross that it's going down to the other Bollinger Band. So let's just say conservatively, we risk 20 for 126. That's one to six. Go oh, six to one, guys. You could literally, if you're trading that kind of um, um, odds, if you're trading on that kind of a, a, a percentage, you're if you lose, you know, uh, eight out of ten, you're still breaking even. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you could, and not to say you should be losing eight out of ten, but if you're hitting that fifty percent with that kind of a, a, a setup, guys, you're literally going to be making so much money in the market. It's ridiculous. So, again, you're looking for low-risk, high-reward trades that are going to put you in a, um, in, in a situation where you're in, in these zones, right? Look at my zone right here. This thing formed this zone, right? And uh, now I'm looking for it to retest. But we know this zone is here. My, my Bollinger Band or my uh, nine moving average is here. So we're looking for the retest to stop here first. And if you drop Fibonacci on on it you're looking at first level second level third level right so what i don't even have to do that right now 
But look, first level, second level, third level. If you see that full that full retracement, what's that called? That's called a reversal, right? So if it, if it's a 100% re, um, retracement, we know that's 100% reversal. It's opposite direction start for the buy. But right now we're looking for a retrace and then a continuation to the trend line and then a reversal. Check it here. Let's see what happens. If it goes through here, let's see what happens. If it breaks through here and the next the next candle it forms, bro, it's time to eat. All right. So GA is going to be a big pair to watch this week. Um, and we don't have, I know we've kept you guys on forever. I'm not going to get into EA, but I will be posting some stuff about EA and Discord. Um, but guys, I'm telling you what Curtis was talking about on his pairs. Jay Wayne, Jay's a beast. He was you know, calling out crazy stuff on his pairs. Uh, Bacon, some of the stuff he was talking about. And now just looking at some of these zones and looking what's coming. This is going to be a big week in the market. I believe it. And um, just make sure you guys are, are, are getting in with us. If you're not in the team, it's time to, um, you know, it's time to get in the team. So, um, Curtis, I'm going to turn it back to you, bro. I tried to unmute myself and the whole thing just lit back up. But, yeah, man, like, dude, I appreciate you guys hopping on even, you know what I'm saying, getting this information that we're dropping right now. Now, one of the things that I really wanted to touch on, too, was the fact that – Bacon dropped his strategy on you guys really quick, just showed you a quick overview of how he analyzes the markets. And then Joe came in and showed his strategy of how he analyzes the markets. And laying those two strategies side by side, you pretty much got the same analysis from two separate traders with two totally different ideologies of how they trade the market. This is where I want you guys to understand there is no right or wrong, good or bad, you know, correct or incorrect way to trade the markets. It's you finding your way inside the markets. The moves are going to be the moves. You just have to make sure it fits your style and what you truly believe in. That's it. Now, if you find people who are, you know, a little bit different from your style, I'm, I'm, I may be different from Bacon's, I may be different from Joe's, I may be different from Jay Wayne's. But when we come together, the power of seeing all of that confluence from, from four or five different minds makes so much more sense. And this is where I want you guys to understand trading doesn't have to be a single man sport. Right. You don't have to come into this saying, oh, man, I got to figure all this out on my own. Leverage. One of the most beautiful words in the dictionary. Leverage. OK, we are a team here. We're here to help every single person inside of this chat, inside of the discord, inside of all the groups we have right now. We want to make sure everybody here has a chance to win. Point blank, period. It's not about, you know, me making all the money or Joe or, or Greg or Jay Wayne making all of the money. It's, it's all about all of us learning and developing together as a unit. All right. We know everybody has different learning styles, different learning, different learning, you know, cognitive biases where you may find something a little bit easier when you hear it. Somebody else may be a little bit more visual. Somebody else may be a little bit more hands on. It's not a problem. You just have to speak up and let us know, hey, I'm having issues with so and so area. I need help with that, right? Andrew hits me up every day. Bro, I need help. Bro, I need help. But I'm like, what you need? What's up, right? We're going to make sure everybody gets what they need, okay, guys? So if you're on the sidelines and you're a little apprehensive, you're like, mm, I'm busy. I got stuff going on. I know you guys are, you know, all got all kind of different things going on yourself. I like my man Adam over here. I had to stop and just pay him attention. I'm filling you with the hat, bro. I'm with you. <laughs> but I want to make sure... As you guys know, we're here for you, though. That's really just what it comes down to. And also, when we do our London sessions, we're inside the Discord talking to each other. So that Discord chat at the bottom, you guys may not know about it just yet. At the very bottom of Discord, we have video chats where you guys can actually come on a London session, come into the video chat, and we're all talking strategy. We're in there just kind of, you know, shooting the breeze, having a good time. But it's not one of those stressful situations. We're not inside the Discord chat going, oh, God, we're all losing. It's like, hey get ready. We're watching this and this move about to take place. Start off with a small lot if you're not too comfortable with it. And we, as it starts to grow and we get some equity, we'll find another entry as the trade starts to take, take off. Or we'll get in on a retracement, watch it bounce off of one of our other entries, maybe a bottom Bollinger Band, push back up to the upside, and we can all take it together. So that way, you won't feel like, man, I lost some money by myself. Or, oh, man, I made all this money by myself. Because what I found out is trading is really fun. But trading is much more enjoyable when you actually have people winning with you, okay? We could all sit in our homes and, you know, <laughs> trade by ourselves. I see you, Joe, and trade by ourselves. But when I'm, in that, when I'm in that group chat, 
and I got 13 people all making money together, listen, I, I feel like I just won a championship. So I'm doing a Jordan pose around the house like, mm-hmm, I got my Kobe going right. on. I got my Kobe going on. Ain't that right, Joe? So <laughs> I don't even want to get him started with basketball talk. But – 45 points in game seven, baby. See, here we go. See, I just made a, a half a piece of a joke, and he came right back with, with a LeBron stat. <laughs> I just want to make sure that you guys know that we're, we're all here to, you know, make money and, you know, grow and, and really just build this skill set as a unit, okay? It, it's, not, it's not about, you know, hitting a home run all the time or winning every single trade. Losses are 100% a part of this process. You can't dodge it. You shouldn't even try to get into the market telling yourself, I just don't want to lose today. You must not even trade. You must not even do it. You have to know that the losses are a part of the process. If we have a loss, mind you, some of the areas they just showed you guys, let me just actually pull up this, this chart one more time for you guys and show you what I'm talking about. If you're marking up your charts, right, in the right fashion, let me just get this out of the way first, put that up so we can come back to that in a second. If you're marking up your charts, in the right fashion, right? Dr. Bacon pulled up his chart. He had his whole levels marked up, ready to go. Four hour time frame. Let's zoom in a little bit, a little bit more. Sweet. If you're marking up your charts the right way, right? And now you're seeing the markets in a way where everything's starting to add up. Check this out. If you lose, you already know what's coming next. You already know if it breaks this level and keeps going, it's going to keep going. It's not, you're not second guessing it now. You're like, okay, the market needs to show me its hand. If I lose this trade, it wants to keep going to the upside. If I take a sale here, okay, I want to see it keep dropping. If it comes back and retest, I want to see how far it's going to go before it, it drops off in my favor. I mean, even at its extremes, right? Like here or here, even if you, even if you marked it up, well, hey, I'm marking it up here. You have these little wicks here on a four hour. You're being patient and you're finding all the right moves all the right moves and it's just stop trying to come in and hit the home run guys stop trying to come in and make sure you get this candle every time you get in the trade there's nothing wrong with getting in here and getting out here getting in here and getting out there there's nothing wrong with that because it's all about consistency okay forex is a compounding tool forex isn't a get rich tool it's a compounding tool there are people who make livings trading and they only trade maybe a thousand dollars in their account and they literally make a living just saying, hey, I need to make $500 every week. That's all I want to do. And they'll get in the market with a $1,000 account and just make $500 every week. And then snatch that money out and make a living doing it because it's all about being consistent. They're not coming in trying to hit the home run. They're taking those small moves and letting that account keep compounding, keep compounding. And you got to get that, you got to get that mentality out of your head where every trade has to be you know, a hundred dollar or a hundred pip, or it has to be a, a 80 pip move every time you get in, right? You can risk 15 pips to make 60 and that's fine. That's 100% fine. But you have to make sure that if you're going to take these kind of trades and you're going to trade certain pairs, because understand when we talk about GBP pairs, these bad boys got big moves. So GBP pairs may not be very, you know, user friendly <laughs> to the new person. Okay, think about this. This one candle, right? This one candle right here from here to here is a hundred, almost a hundred, yeah, about a hundred pips, literally from open to close. Open to close, not even including the wigs. A hundred pips inside of this one four-hour candle. That is substantial. Now, I'm just going to skip gears and jump back over here to this USDJPY. Let's go to the four-hour. Let's find one of the biggest candles we can find on here, just for argument's sake, right? Want to see? We, here we go. Right here. This is a nice size candle on USD JPY. Four hour time frame. From here to here. That's about 60 pips, guys. That's about 60 pips. I just, I'll get it one more time for those who didn't see it. From open to close, it's about 65 pips. Okay. Just a little bit over half of what you would have got from the. <laughs> From the GBP pair. This is why USDJPY is probably a lot more user friendly to a new person. You can't get chopped up trading a USDJPY as opposed to trading a GBP pair. We talked about ATR. We understood what that meant. If you're new, you don't understand what ATR is. It just stands for average true range. I want you guys to think about the Great British Pound as just as what it is. 
It's one of the most expensive currencies on the planet. There's no other currency on the planet that's more valuable than a great British pound. Okay, it's more valuable than the US dollars, more valuable than the euros, more valuable than the yen, the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, all of that. So now when you understand the, the, the range and price where if the, if the great British pound is up against something like uh, the Japanese yen, which is a devalue currency, where it means it's always cheap, the range, the actual distance between those two pairs is very vast. So now when that pair starts to move and fluctuate, there aren't really close price ranges. They're so far stretched out. That's why those candles have so many more pips in them because the difference in the value of those two currencies is vast, okay? Now, something like USDJPY, where yes, the US dollar is a nice currency, but it's not the most expensive currency on the planet. And the Japanese yen is not that far off either. So now the movement is different, but you're not going to get that same amount as you would from the, uh, from the Great British Pound. Okay, just wanted to share that with you guys. And also, people always ask me, why don't I get the same movement with the, with the euro and the GBP? The euro is the second most expensive currency on the planet. The U.S. dollar is around third. So euro GBP won't have a large ATR either. They're both really expensive pairs. So now you got two big money movers competing. So that's the only GBP pair that you won't see a big ATR in. Okay, and it's the only winner with G with a Great British Pound will be in the secondary pair position. That's the only pair you'll find GBP in, as a number two. But just little things like that will start to help you out when you start when you're looking at pairs. So if you're new and you want to look at a four hour time frame and you want to start entering and exiting trades and you want to start finding really good moves and not get chopped up, trade USD JPY, trade Australian dollar JPY, even better, right? So I want to make sure you guys are getting those real good movements. Like even like AJ, right? Australian dollar JPY daily time frame. Let me zoom in a little bit. This thing has been like killing me right now. AJ has been really moving and I've been missing all of the good moves. Let me go to the four hour for you real quick. It's been doing like everything I wanted it to do too. Like every time I wanted to get a good move, like, this right here was the one I waited for and I still didn't take. I even had this ready to go and I didn't take it where it came out of the Bollinger Band, gave me the doji I was looking for, showing the, 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 the transition in, in price, wanting to stop in reverse, and I did not even take this trade, okay? I kicked myself for that. Then it came back up and did a Dr. Bacon special where it retested that same level and then dropped off again. It was, oh, you missed it? Hey, Kurt, we, we, we ain't forgot about you. Oh, you went to sleep? All right, forget you then. And it left again. I ain't take the second one. So <laughs> this week, I won't be making that same mistake. But I want you guys to see, even inside of here, right? This move, let me go back over from here to here. That's like 50 pips on a four-hour candle, okay? We sat in this trade for four hours for 50 pips. This is where you will see us as the, you know, leadership in the, in the team you will see more gbp pairs than not coming from most of our trades because we know if we're doing all this analysis we're gonna we want the we want the real movement if that that makes us greedy then it is what it is but i'm going to transition off of this and i just wanted to kind of touch on how the strategies overlap where i may be different from bacon bacon may be different from joe joe may be different from jay wayne jay wayne may be different from greg you know greg may be different from casey but we're all trading using the same charts we're all looking at the same price action okay and when you when you overlap those strategies it's going to we all gonna see the same thing and curtis that's even more of a that's even more confirmation too like when you have when you know everything about forex is confirmation right everything about forex is patience and confirmation like i said in my training last week when you're looking at pairs i know when i'm looking at pairs and i know curtis and jay you know, our team, when we're looking at pairs, we're looking just as much for reasons to stay out of a trade as we are for reasons to get in a trade. Mm -hmm. You know, so like I might see five or six different reasons why this trade could possibly go in the right direction. But if I see one reason that's legitimate, that it's going to go in the opposite direction, that's enough for me to not want to get in that trade. That's enough for me to say, well, let's wait, let's hold off. And so I say all that to say this. When you see Curtis's engulfing candle strategy and the doji candle outside the Bollinger Band, then you see my strategy with Bollinger Bands and the new candle closing inside with the nine moving average crossing. And then you see 
Bacon strategy with the highs and lows and naked forex. And you look at Jay Wayne's strategy with 30 minute crossover and uh, support and resistance zones. And then you see all of the, you know, Greg's and all the different, and you see all of those things are saying the same thing. Guys, that's like, that's huge. When you see like five different strategies and no matter what strategy we're on, it's all saying buy, it's time to eat. When we're looking at all five different strategies on the same pair and it's saying sell, it's time to eat. But if my strategy says buy and Curtis's strategy says hold off and Bacon's strategy says we're in the middle of a move, like to me, that's all right, I, I, even though I might see a buy on mine, it's time to wait a little bit. Let's wait for a better setup. Let, let's wait for the perfect setup and be patient because, again, it's about risk management. If I could get in and risk 20 pips, for 60 or better, I'm a happy man. Mm -hmm. But if I'm risking 30 pips to get 30 pips, to me, that's not worth it, right? <laughs> so I'm looking for, you know, good high, uh, high reward, low risk trades, uh, plenty of confirmation. And as well, I'm looking for reasons to stay out of the market. Is there anything here telling me that I should hold off? And if there is, I'm going to hold off, right? And so I'll ask when we call out our trades to each other, hey, Curtis, Hey, Jay. Hey, Greg. Hey, Bacon. What do you guys think about this trade? And, and, if, and if Curtis says, you know, hey, what you're saying is right, but look at this. And I say, oh, I didn't see that because, hey, I'm a human. I didn't see that. And it's so good to have more eyes on these trades. And, guys, so look, what I'm encouraging you to do is, is learn all of these strategies. Find what works best for you, but keep all of them in the back of your mind so you can refer to them for confirmation. And then get in on Discord with all of us. And when we're trading that session together, now it's like, hey, guys, I, like Andrew Woodruff, he does it a lot. You know, hey, what do you guys think about this? Adam, Adam Wanish, was, what do you think about this? You know, and that, that's good. Everybody, like, get in together. And, and that confirmation, that continuity that we have with the team, that's everything, guys. So, like, really, really, really important to see that when strategies are different but they say the same thing, that's a strong confirmation that we're doing something right. And that's what, that's what I keep preaching to people. Everything, everything about this group is value added. I mean, there's, there's nothing about anything that goes on says, well, it's all about me. It's, it's just not. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, without you guys, we just a bunch of dudes sitting around talking charts all day. Like <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like at the end of the day, we all came into, you know, IML to make a couple extra dollars. And it's so much more once you once you lock arms with a real team. Everybody cares about everybody. Like if Adam hits me up and say, "Man, I had a hard day in the market today," I wouldn't know. explain it to me, bro. Let me know what happened. Get me on the up and up so I can I can see something that you didn't see, or you can tell me, "Hey, my entries were good, but I was just getting in too early," or "Hey, I was my entries were good, but I was getting in too late." And being early and being late in the market is the exact same thing. Period. There's no, it's no way to sugarcoat it. Being early and being late is the exact same thing. It's all about timing. And this is why having pending orders plays, it plays a part. This is why having a team plays a part because you could be busy with the family, busy with work. And if Joe sees something, he drops it in a group. It's like, oh man, thank you. I was paying attention to that, but I was busy for a minute. Thank you for giving me the heads up on this, bro. It's definitely game time on this trade because it's been on my checklist or my watch list. Also, with the news that we have here from Forex Factory, this allows us to make sure we're not trading the wrong pairs at the wrong times, okay? Because like I said, timing is everything. So if we're looking at the market saying, man, bro, GBP NZD is looking really good. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you might want to hold off on that one because it's not. it may be a little bit too early to jump in on that. Give it some time and let's let the news happen first because we don't want this thing to chop you up or it just goes sideways the moment you get in. Because NZD all of a sudden is getting pulled a certain direction and is going against the value of the, G of the GBP or vice versa, right? So right now this week, we got a lot of medium news. You know, we got some, some, uh, some Audi news on Monday, Tuesday. We got some uh, uh, the Bank of Australia uh, rate hey, statements. Hey, so I think they're going to be raising. Excuse me? Hey, Curtis, when you're looking at news and just for your – your perspective here mm -hmm. um, I generally tell you know people in my team that when we're trading new like when the news is coming out 
to basically stay out between like four hours before and four hours after. Um, what what is uh, you know like what is your what is your general take on news? That's a little steep. Well, what I like to do is I tell people say I would say give it an hour, give it an hour before and give it an hour after. Because that way, before usually what happens anyway, when it's big news on the way, the market just goes sideways right before news hit. Like it's like it's like a ghost town. Like you see the tumbleweeds going past, like nothing's moving. That's how it is in the market. Like right before news, it's like Ooh, wow, wow, wow. Like nothing's happening. You just see tumbleweeds blowing across the street. Nobody's outside. Everybody's peeking out the windows. Like, did they start shooting yet? Like that's how it is. So an hour before, just let it go. Don't do anything. And then an hour after. Usually, the first 30 to 45 minutes is all of the big push of the news. And then you can kind of let it, like, stall out that last 15 minutes or an hour. And then that next hour, you'll be able to kind of see, okay, let me make a move from here. And typically, during that time after news hits, because most news updates hit, you know, around, like, 12, 10 o'clock-ish. Usually after that, the market's starting to kind of, like, settle out anyway. So usually I would say, you know, after news hits, you're leading into the London or the Asian session. So you're not really excited to jump in the market anyway. You're going to end up waiting for the London to get a retest of any of the areas that the news left. Because remember, we talked about how ABCD rules work. I'll give you guys an example of that before we get done with this too. But just want to go through uh, Audi Dollar uh, Register, what a register, the Reserved Bank of Australia, maybe doing an interest rate hike on Aussie Dollar Tuesday, which is kind of big. Uh, manufacturing PMI, that's just a uh, producer. Uh, what is it, PM? I can't even remember what it is. It's been so long. Basically, what happens with GBP is they're going to be going over this to make sure that the actual companies are spending, or are, are they spending a lot of money to bring more actual goods into the economy? So certain certain businesses that, you know, I guess food, the food industry, the medical industry, uh, the tech industry, whatever they're importing, how much of it are they importing or how much is actually being made and being sold? That's the whole thing with this. So it basically just shows that how much money are the are corporations spending on goods and services right now. That's actually going to be good. Then they're going to do CAD GDP. That's a big one for the Canadian dollar. USD, same thing, manufacturing. Uh, Bank of Canada, governor's going to be speaking again. So, yeah, we got some big news for NZD this week. It looks like NZD is going to have a whole lot of stuff going on. Monday, what is this? No, Tuesday is going to be a big day for NZD. And that's like late in the evening news at that too. So watch out for this, like during the, during the, uh, the Asian session. Cause I, I'm just noticing that's like almost seven o'clock, you know, in the afternoon at night. So you may see some big moves from NZD. And I've noticed too, if you ever go back and check out NZD pairs, they, uh, these are like one of the only pairs that move during the London, I mean, during the Asian session. NZD around eight o'clock Eastern time makes big candles. I don't know why it just typically does at eight o'clock for NZD. It's really weird. It's one of the only ones that I look at in the Asian session, but you can check out uh, NZD JPY. Just go back and check out eight o'clock. Every time around eight o'clock, you get a big candle from NZD. So maybe an hour early on this one. Uh, what else we got? Wednesday is usually crude oil inventories. Yep. For US dollar. This also affects the Canadian dollar. The uh, construction PMI for GBP. Uh, federal funds rate, FOMC. Yeah, so we got some Fed news coming out Wednesday for the U.S. dollar. And Thursday, more PMI. Man, they're going crazy with the PMI. Yeah, so see right here, like they have construction PMI. So they're going through seeing how many companies are bringing in, like uh, construction-based companies are... It's you know, probably spending. a quarterly thing. Yeah, yeah, more than likely it's going to be like the beginning of the first quarter. So they're probably going to go through the books now. And start seeing how much money is really flowing in. Euro has a CPI. I love CPIs. These are always big. And that's going to be going around 5 a.m. on Thursday. So, yeah, be on the lookout for that. So, just go through here. If you guys are looking to trade certain pairs and you want to mark off the different currency pairs that overlap with what you're trading. So, if you're trading like a GBP, JPY, right, you know on Thursday they're going to be having a bank holiday for the Japanese yen. So now you got to kind of keep that in mind, knowing that they're not, there's not going to be a lot of volatility because that bank's going to be closed and there won't be a lot of money flowing through. OK, so it's certain things you got to look out for, because now it's not, it's not so much that the banks are closed and people think, well, if the banks closed for Japanese yen, that means the Great British Power is going to just run away. It doesn't work that way. You have to keep in mind these are banks communicating with each other. So if GBP 
can't give any, any can't send any money to a Japanese bank for the give and take to take place, there's no movement. Period. Just like when the U.S. pairs have a holiday, there's no money flowing through those banks. Those other pairs, like the euro and the Japanese yen and all that, can't make any transactions with the U.S. So now there's no real volatility on both sides. Okay. So that's where a lot of times people kind of get confused. Like, well, if the Japanese yen is closed, Great British Pound should be going crazy. Yeah. No, 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 no. Takes two to tango in the Forex market. Can't have one without the other. All right. And then Friday, I won't be trading anyway, but we have non farm payroll. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Bacon already laughing. Because I know you're going to hit me up like, I know you're trading that NFP, bro. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not touching it. I do not mess with NFP. No, I, I actually like the – actually, they don't even have them this Friday. Usually it's some, some Canadian folders that come with them, but they're not even there. Yeah. Um, that, that's kind of creepy. Usually it's uh, Canada CPIs and uh, unemployment claims with the Canada with that too, but I don't even see them. So. Actually, no, Um, I have mine filtered. So let me actually do this right quick because uh, usually – I don't have these up, so it might be on there for you. I'm on. No, no, they red folders. They red folders, bro. Let's see. Euro, 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 euro. Yeah, nothing real big. So, yeah, yeah all we got it. is a little bit of PMI for Canada at 10 o'clock, but nothing real big. Right, right. So, yeah, I, I won't be messing with 9 fine payroll this week. I, Welcome. I <laughs> Welcome to the fold. <laughs> it did me wrong last time, so I, I'm leaving it alone. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> So, yeah, guys, just, just understanding the news and having those time frames put aside. Because, I mean, they give you everything you need where you know the time of day, you know the pair, you know what kind of volatility to look out for. So it's really up to you to just kind of make sure your trading plan is reflecting what's happening in the news because you can get chopped up by not paying attention. Now, I also wanted to talk about the different tools we got, like with the scanner and the web analyzer and the different things that we're actually using right now. I want to make sure you guys are really like plugging into these tools. And I don't want to stay on too long because I know we got like another call, right? Like they're doing that call for the uh, product release and stuff right now. Like we, they're, they're talking about the Swipe Coin today and they're talking about the uh, Coin Academy as well on another call in uh, IML Elite. So I'm going to probably wrap us up here and I'm going to let everybody get a chance to go ahead and check out the new products and services that we got coming out. But we're going to be uh, jumping back on here Thursday as well, doing another training. And we're going to be dropping a lot of videos inside of the uh, Discord as well. Like, I'm going to be dropping some training videos. Joe's dropping a few more. Dr. Bacon's dropping some. I'm going to go ahead and make sure Jasir gets his trading skills up so he can start dropping videos in there for y'all because he over there beasting. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and end it here, guys. And I don't know if uh, Jay Wayne is still on. I know he's probably the leader right now, so he's going to have to uh, do the stop recording. Yeah, I got you. All right, yeah. So I appreciate everybody tuning in and jumping on. Uh, anybody else want to say anything before we get off? Uh, Dr. Baker want to say one thing. For sure. Real quick. All right, I'm not going to hold y'all on. I know we've been here for a long time. I appreciate Curtis, Jay, Wayne, Joe, everybody throwing out them tips, them golden nuggets. That's what it's all about. I appreciate y'all. I'm happy to be a part of the team. Hey, man, real quick, I don't like to play with nobody money. I, I, I That's one thing I teach on because I'm using my own money as well as just like everybody else in live accounts. So what I like to do, and I did this with my old team, I just want to get to know every single last person in my group. I want to know what your goals are, what, what your plans are, what a forest market, what are you expecting, what do you want to learn? And uh, you can just send me a message on Discord or whatever you want to do. Um, if you want to get in contact with me, I'll drop the number. I don't care. I'm, I'm willing to talk to every single last one of y'all. So if I could just know your goals and see what we can do to change that, because that's all we want to do is change lives. So we can just drop that information. Let me get that information. And uh, I, I, I love and I appreciate that. And uh, that's all, really. I ain't going to hold y'all on. I love you guys all so much. And thank you for having me a part of the team.